was close and goons with greenish skin. So close your eyes and you will find that you've arrived in Frankenstein. Perhaps the Count will find a way to make his monster work today. For if he solves this monster mania, he can return to Transylvania. So welcome where the sun won't shine to the castle of Count Frightenstein. <laughs> My beautiful little devils. You think I've given up on you, do you not? Where have you? Not even a double help. And so bring you here I come right back well. Igor! The base dumb is here. <laughs> what? what are you doing? You're late again. Explain yourself. I am sorry, Master. But I was outside trying on my new wig. Well, we will not talk of these battles now. War! I have a good idea, Master. That good will idea. be new. Shouldn't we raise the flag of Transylvania, maybe, and do the pledge? No. No, Igor! I have a better idea. Yes, Master? Let us raise the flag of Transylvania and sing our national anthem. Yes, Master. Sometimes I think of these things. Like that. Hit it! Gory, gory Transylvania, the werewolves and bats will always maim ya. The murky moor will likely claim ya as the most unbelievable. Mm. I swear and pledge by the sign of the three tooth slot that I will do my best to do my duty and always obey the laws of the werewolf pack and to never rest until Bruce heaves once more and takes his rightful place in the annals of distinguished monsters. And I can once again return to that goriest of all places, Transylvania. Gory, gory Transylvania, sing it! As we go, a star of a <sighs> Through Aye, master. your notation is magnifi sint. Be keep it up, master. <laughs> I've had enough. I ran out of bail. Thank you, master. Now, what is this? You were trying on a wig in the rain. Yes, Master, I was trying on my wig in the rain outside. Were you not afraid of getting it wet? No, Master, it's a waterfall. <laughs> Split. On a sight. Please help me. Please, Uga Booga. I asked the old professor, please, just what are the attractions of laboring in a lab all day on chemical reactions? He said I'd never understand the scientific mind. His motto was you'll never know until you seek and find. He said the best part of it all was that he had no notions of what to do, so never knew if there would be explosion. I am the professor, the one professor in this castle who goes by the name of Julius Sumner Miller. And my business is physics. And are we not agreed that these matters are enchanting for the spirit, curious for the mind, exciting to contemplate? 
Let us now go to the ball on the string. And would you believe it? It is good for six one-hour lectures, but I shall dispose of it in a rather super, superficial way. Ball on a string. I need to make clear the following. Here is the circular path. There is the ball, there is the string, there is my hand. Let it be going in this direction. So, in a vertical circle, circle in a vertical plane, at the instant in question, the ball is going this away with a certain velocity v. And in order to constrain the ball to the path, I have to exert a force on it, which we call the centripetal force. And if there is a pull of the string on the ball, there is a pull of the ball on the string, and we have shamefully labeled this one the centrifugal force, which gives everybody the idea that there is a force radially outward on the ball, which there ain't. Now, that may not be the king's English, because when I let go of the string or cut it there, that force disappears and the ball goes that away, according to Newton's laws of motion. Now, an interesting, an interesting inquiry, and you must be sharply tuned to my question. Is it not true that if I don't go fast enough, the ball cannot make the circle? Yes, it's true. Roughly shown like that. The ball can't stay up there because the string cannot take a compression. So I have to go fast enough for the ball to make the circle. For those of you who know some mathematics and some physics, and there are those amongst you, the critical velocity for this to happen is the square root of gr, where r is the length of the string. So if the string was two feet long, g is 32 without the units, the square root of 64, the ball would have to be going eight feet per second in the path for it to stay there. Anything less, it'll fall down. Good. Good. Uh, since this uh, bucket is too heavy for me, I'm a weak uh, professor in this old place. Let us imagine that this is the bucket and I have some water in the bucket. So I say, do you see that I have some water in the bucket? And people say, there is no water in the bucket. Oh, oh, oh you trouble me. I say, there is water in the bucket. And for this purpose, we need imagination. How many see that I now have water in the bucket? All of you. Indeed, it is so. So there's water in the bucket, and there's a string connected to the handle of the bucket. And now, here I am, Mama. Look how big and strong I am, even at my old age. And obviously, if I don't go fast enough at the top, the water will fall out of the bucket. Are you not all agreed with that? Sure you are. And those of you who agreed with that are wrong. <laughs> you say you are wrong. Why are you wrong? Because the bucket will fall with the same acceleration as the water in it, and the water will not fall out of the bucket. And now you can rest with your sick judgment earlier made. How many of you see that the water does not fall out of the bucket? It does not. It does not. And that is a beautiful little dilemma. So remember, the case of a ball on a string leads to an apparent paradox to which many fall victim. Many fall victim. In another program, I will show you another one bearing on this matter. So beware, beware. I shall come again. Polly is a cracker. Hmm. Excuse me, miss, but you dropped your hanky. Do you know what's wrong with Bruce Eagle? He doesn't work. No. I mean, yes, but... Well, if we could just get him to work by maybe giving him a shock. We tried that, and I ended up with a shock. 200,000 volts worth of shock. No, 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 no. Not that kind of shock. What I'm talking about is the kind when you have the hiccups. You know, you go boom, 
and we scare him into getting out. Oh, if you can only try. I'll go around that way and I'll try, man. Do that, Igor. <laughs> Hello, Bruce. Ah! No good, master. He's too used to having me around, master. Never fear, for the count is here. Walk back, master. Hello, Bruce. Ah! You scared the wits out of me, master. As a matter of fact, there must be somebody here on the floor. I'm sorry about that, Igor. It didn't do much good for Bruce either. He could sleep through an earthquake. That's it. That's what, mister. Say that again. What a mess! It won't work, Master. We've tried everything. Not yet, Igor. We will go and hide. Then we will sneak up on him. And we will give him the scary scale at the same time. It won't try. work, Master. I'll try. You should try. Count says so. something I say. Is this a groovy scene? Don't go away. <laughs> All right, Igor, what do you think of my new invention, eh? <laughs> I think it's terrific, Master. What is it? See if you can guess. Uh, I think it's for uh, swimming in the moat. Like these little shiny things light up at night and the uh, speedboat couldn't knock you over. Oh, no, you're wrong, Igor. But nice try anyway. <laughs> I know what. Here's the second half of the invention. Now can you figure out what it is? Sure, Master. <laughs> what is it? I give up. Oh, I thought you would give up. Don't you understand what I have invented? I have invented the hurricane hat. I will explain its function to you. A hurricane hat? That is correct. Firstly, you see, now we put on this particular hat that has very powerful magnets on it. All right? Try that. Actually, Master, I'd rather not get involved, but... Never mind, you just do what you're told. That's good, very good. Now, now, understand here, in the rim of the hat, our corresponding magnet, you see? Yes, yes. That will cling on to here. And then we will take the wire and hook it up to the machine. Do you understand? <laughs> that there isn't a wind in a possible hurricane that could ever blow this hat off your head. I understand, Master. There. Very good. Now, but, Master, there isn't a hurricane. Well, we'll pretend. Oh, I'll hurricane. pretend. Oh, Master, wow. the wind is so strong, I think I'll just go to the kitchen for a peanut butter and marshmallow sandwich. Come back here, Igor. Come back here. Now, we are going to try this out to prove my theory. Now, I will hook up the wires here. Are you ready? Are you sure it's safe, Master? Of course, it's always safe. The Count did it, didn't he? All right, now I start the press, the start button. <laughs> Look what you've done! You've broken it! You've broken my invention! 
Now, what are we going to do if we ever have a hurricane? Simple, master. We'll get our galoshes, our mufflers, and our coats, and we'll stay inside. Well, oh, maybe that's not a bad idea. It is written that free from the attachment of all things that are divine, vastness of the ethereal space is hidden only from the laggard in the foundry. <laughs> went to hospital, but not because she was sick. She took a batch of baking up so they could take their pick. The doctor stopped her at the door and said, Stay out of here. Your cakes and pies and cookies have the wrong effect, I fear. We hoped they'd cheer our patients up, but since they ate, I swear that 85% have gone into intensive care. talented. <laughs> I love to climb an apple tree because apples are so good for me. I like to climb an apple tree. <laughs> it's foolish, but it's fun. <laughs> Come on in. Woo! Into happiness street. Oh, we're going to have so much fun today because we have a recipe that you're just going to love. And we call it Victor Violin from Vancouver, a very vivacious veterinarian and violent vegetarian. Woo! Didn't you know that? Now, I'll check my recipe book. Yes, I've got it. All the ingredients are here. Now, the first thing we're going to use, quite naturally, is Bangkok Banquet Hall. Now, we'll just put... There, that's better. Oh, they got stuck together. Oh, they're very reminiscent of jelly beans. <laughs> now, we stir them around. They're so colorful. Now, naturally, a little suntan lotion. There we go. And what else have we got here? Let's see. Oh, yes, of course. Dream dye sauce. Wonderful, wonderful. Now a little dream dye sauce there. Oh, there you are. Woo! <laughs> I love that little brute. There we go. Now, isn't that fantastic? Molina McCoy, eat your heart out. And now here we go for the last ingredient. Now we're going by Polly. Whoa, hey, Polly has another little message. Polly put the kettle on, kettle on, kettle on. Polly put the, well, why don't you do something, you silly, naughty bird? You never do a thing to help. Hi ho, sliver! <laughs> Get lost! And now, as you well know, that mixing anything like this for a vegetarian, we naturally have to use something that a vegetarian would use. Now, in this particular case, I think we should use a can of Latvian lobster. Thrilling? Woo! Too much. Come on. Here we go. Over to the cauldron. Hello there. Now, here we are with our Latvian lobster, and we're putting that in the cauldron, aren't we? Yes, we are. Here we go, into the cauldron. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> that being done, we now go back to our little mixing bowl. Oh, it's looking just scrumptious. I think perhaps just a touch of black widow sauce. Good, ooh, looking awfully good. Now we're going to the cauldron. Here we go to the cauldron. And all the goodies in the cauldron we go. That's it. Now, now. Cauldron, cauldron, toil and trouble. Cauldron boil and cauldron bubble. Tasters. Why were you hitting Bruce in the face with a bat? I was teaching him to bat his eyes. <laughs> Librarians are boring types, or so most people say. The only thing they like to do is sit and read all day. Librarians, they say, delight in giving nasty looks, because it's common knowledge they're as stuffy as their books. But I know one whose secret fun he once confessed to me. He said, when everybody's gone, I like to watch TV.
Welcome to the library. And I am the librarian. And I am here for a special purpose. To... Uh, horrify you. And now let's see what our story is for today. Ah, oh, yes. The lion and the hares. One day, all the animals were called together. There was to be a meeting, and many speeches were going to be made. A hare spoke first. That's a little rabbit. We hares have not been treated fairly, he said just because we are not as large as others. That is no reason why we shouldn't be treated as equals. We want justice. We demand our rights and we mean to get them. Our motto is share and share alike. For that matter, hair and hair alike. <laughs> are you horrified? Yes. The smaller animals clapped and cheered. The larger animals said nothing but looked at the lions. Then one of the lions spoke. That is a fine speech, Mr. Hare, said the lion. A fine speech, but it lacks something. It lacks what lions have and what hares will have to get before they can expect to share with us. It lacks claws, long, sharp claws and teeth, long, sharp teeth. And with a roar, he bared his savage teeth and put out his cruel knife-like claws. The hare did not stop to argue, and he ran away. And the moral is, actions speak louder than words. <laughs> Terrifying. But I grow weary now. The librarian says, goodbye. Goodbye. Boy, here's one that'll really sting you. <laughs> I know a mosquito. He's so shy that he can't fight until there's absolutely no one else in the room. <laughs> and even then he'll find some sort of excuse. <laughs> Next time. <laughs> I'm afraid it's a commercial. Ooga booga. <laughs> Hello? Oh, it's you, Uglik. You will have to speak in English because I can't understand. Oh, there. Howdy, Igor. How are things? Just great, Uglik. How are things on Mars? Oh, still working in the Mars bars factory. <laughs> Our production has slowed down considerably since we spilled the caramel on the floor. <laughs> well, it's sure great to hear from you. I haven't seen you in. Oh, gosh. It's been a long time, hasn't it? Oh, yeah. The last I saw you was during the War of the Worlds. That was a time I really got bugged. Are you feeling better now? Yep. I am feeling fine. Good, good. Say, how's Orson Welles? Uh, as well as can be expected. Oh, a joke. In fact, you knew he hit oil the other day. No kidding. How did he manage that? Oh, yeah, oil gushing all over the place. He drove into a service station. Hey, you know what we're getting? UFOs up here? No kidding. All that way up there. That's something. Unidentified flying objects. You got any idea of what they are? Why, sure we know what they are. They're UFOs. UFOs. We have all over the place. Some are some kind of cigar shaped. We smoke after a meal. Some are kind of saucer shaped. Put a little milk in them. Oh, yeah. Uh, what about the people inside? They are lonely with sour cream. <laughs> what kind were they? Were they erosion? 
Oh no, they're just longhorn slew. You can catch them real easy. You just put your hand over them. <laughs> Say, hi, you, you little devil. I've got one right here on a leash. Want to hear him? <laughs> I'd love to, I'd love to hear him. <laughs> Come on over here, little fellow. Say a few words. <laughs> Gee, he's got a nice tone to him, doesn't he? <laughs> Sure he does. And we really like him around here. Oh, he's full of spunk. Good fellow. Boy, he is practically one of the family. Right now, I think I'll take him for a little walk. So, I guess I'll go now. See you later, Igor. Right, uh, see you later, Roger. Uh, Uglik, uh, Roger and fade out. <laughs> Goodbye. Igor, he's come. Hey, Mom. The Count is finding out the way to you-know-what. Yes, Count. Before you do! Happy eating! It sure doesn't taste like tomato juice! The Oracle says that games of chance are really rather nice and often plays with several pairs of black pearl gambling dice. He says my next roll will be six. The dice roll from his hand and sure enough, six comes up as if he had it planned. If you accuse him that his dice are fakes that he's had fixed, <laughs> He'll say they haven't. I can't help it if all they roll is six. Swinging and welcome back to the Oracle. Oh, the greatest of them all. But really, I am not the Oracle. No, no, I am someone else. I am the Grand Wizard of all the Oracles. You've never seen me before. I never make predictions that don't come true. No one dares to bang the gong when I'm around. And most important of all, I never... Oh, isn't that terrible? Now you know who I am, all right? And I had you all fooled, eh? Ha, 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 ha. That was funny, wasn't it? No? Okay. Now we will find out what the sign is for today. Oh, wistful mist that the stars have kissed. Oh, which sign? Whose life will fortune twist? Oh, it's coming into me now. Oh, yes, now I'm getting it. Yes, Aquarius. That is very good. Now that's for all the kids that were born between January the 20th and February the 18th. Now, Aquarians are, in many cases, eccentric. As a result, they are, they are drawn towards their other eccentrics, thus fulfilling the old saying, it takes one to know one. <laughs> Straight enough. <sighs> now, to be an eccentric is by no means a, a bad thing. No, 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 no. No, rather than accepting the acceptable, they prefer the radical, the outlandish, and the stimulating. Heavy number, eh? Phew. And now, we will look into our crystal ball. Excuse me, voodoo. <laughs> Oh, when I ever learn, oh. Boy, oh boy, that surely makes a sound. Oh, magic crystal, crystal ball. Tell me now, tell me, oh. It's coming in now, yes. This is the day to accomplish something. Remember that it is, it is better to be on the move rather than resting on your laurels. Or your hardies for that matter. Laurel and Hardy. Ha 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 Never mind the humor. Now is the time to get to those things that you have been putting off for so long. Yes, if you've been putting off your homework and all of those things, you must not. You must get busy and get it done if you're going to pass into the next grade. Is that not so? Sure that is so. The Oracle says so. Groovy. Now I am going to read one of the letters. I love to read it. Wrong number. Now. I don't like these interruptions when I'm trying to... Now it says here that the big guy flew, shot... Oh, please excuse me. Dear Oracle, that's me. Is there anything to the superstition of carrying a rabbit's foot for good luck? Is there anything? Well, well, I'll tell you. It is said that the forepaw of the rabbit's foot brings good luck. Not necessarily to the rabbit, eh? And this is probably true, but the hind foot is another story. No one seems to know just what it does. Some say that it brings evil, while others say that it protects against all manners of harm. I wish they'd get together and get organized. 
I mean, let's get it together if we're going to. Or when in doubt, leave it alone. What say you that, Voodoo? Your move, master. <laughs> there, Igor. Now, you must clown me. Yes, master. <laughs> Igor, what did you do that for? You told me to crown you, master. Well, what rules call for you to hit me on the head? The Marquis of Queensbury rules, master. Igor, that's for boxing. We're playing checkers. Checkers? I thought we were playing chess. No wonder I'm losing. Igor, would you rather play chess? No, master, I don't know how. Will you explain yourself? First you say you're losing the checker game because you want to play chess. Now you tell me you don't know how to play chess. That's another reason why I'm losing. Igor, sometimes I... Igor, see who that is. Yes, master. Who was that, Igor? The mailman, master. Well, where is the mail? Master, you told me to see who it is, not to bring the mail. Igor, you ninny dee dum dums. Will you get the mail, please? I yes, don't master. know. Sometimes. Yeah, yeah, I got it, master. Very good. Now, what is in the mail today? <laughs> well, master, it's the usual bills. We always get bills. And this one is for you, Mark Personal, master. Personal, good. Aha. Please. It's personal, it's for me. <clears throat> Dear sir, the site your castle Frankenstein now stands on has been rezoned, and it is our intention to build a supermarket there. We have evaluated the castle and its contents and are willing to pay anywhere up to three gulars? Three gul? It's an insult, master. It's outrageous. We should get at least oh, three gulars and 50 bats. Master, are you going to answer this letter? No, I'm going to ignore it. Why should I bother? Right, master. What is it you have there? This is from the pharmacy, master. The pictures I took last week, they've come back. Oh, very good. Let me see them, please. There you are, master. <laughs> Igor, you've ruined this one. No, I didn't ask why, master. Your thumb is in the lens. Yes, but I was taking a picture of my thumb, master. Oh, Igor, I don't know what I'm going to do with you. What's the... Now, what is this one, please? That's an airplane. I don't see any airplane here. <laughs> it flew in behind a cloud. Uh, 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 Igor, uh, uh. I warn you. Now, let me see what else we have. Oh, here is a picture of me, but... <laughs> Wait a minute. There's something wrong here, Igor. Let me see, Master. Uh, remember, Master, when I took this picture, you told me that if I took a picture of you, the lens would crack. Oh, but that was just a saying. Well, Master, this time it came true. Hello, Igor. Dr. Peck, there told me once about a zebra who decided he was getting bored and wished to leave the zoo. He took a can of whitewash and covered every mark, then waited for the sun to set and left when it got dark. He joined with some white horses who lived out on the plain, and everything was fine until the sunshine turned to rain. The rain washed all the paint away, revealing every stripe. <laughs> the horses looked at him and said, you're strictly not our type. <laughs> we thought you were a horse they said, but now you must leave us. They gave him 50 cents and sent him packing on the bus. Oh, Dr. Pittman, how are you today? Look at that, you're usually early. Oh, hello, Doctor. Hello, Igor. Welcome, welcome. Well, thought, thank you for your welcome. And I look thought what maybe we you have missed the bus. Today. Look what we have today. Oh, what's this? This is a Tegu lizard, and his name is Tommy. Tommy Tegu. 
<laughs> I would have called him Lizzie. <laughs> Very good. That's cute. Now, I'll tell you something about here. Why don't you take a little walk there? There we go, Tommy. That's the idea. Isn't he beautiful? Mm. Just look at that. Now, these are different from most lizards. They have softer skin, black, small white markings, as you can see here. Right, and... Or alternately white with large, large black markings, you see? Now, you see the forked tongue? See that? Yes. See that forked tongue? Well, they spit that out all the time for protection and to warn you, you see, because they are capable. Here, come on now. Here we are. <laughs> you pay attention to what you're doing, young man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Well, they can bite, but normally they're not aggressive at all. You know, as a matter of fact, this is the kind of lizard they use when they make those big horror films. And they make them look much larger, of course, but like it's just monsters. because they feel they, they look so ugly and grotesque, but I don't think that's a nice thing to that's say about anything. very beautiful, Master. Because everything is beautiful in its own way. Look at his beautiful tail, Master. That's it's true. A well, long let, let tail. me tell you about this tail. You see this here? No. He actually broke off a portion of his tail and he grew this back. Is that why it's a different color? Oh, I mean, that's just fantastic ability to be able to do that. And it does come back, not quite as shiny and smooth as the rest of them, but he still has that tail. Where are you off to, Tommy? Maybe you could teach Brucey a thing or two. Well, I'm sure he could. <laughs> Why not? Now, they attain a length of about two or three feet. But, of course, as you can see, this is just a little fellow. He's only about a foot. So he's got a way to go yet. Yeah, there you go. And uh, they're off. Uh, he's off and running. He's got nice claws. Look at, look at that. Isn't that fantastic? Yes, his claws are about the size of a dog's claw, you see. And they can climb trees and, oh, they can just do a lot of things. Now, they have very aggressive looking eyes, you see. You can really see how those eyes look so aggressive. But they're not really. They're actually lovely little pets. Igor, I want you to have Tommy. For me? For you, Igor. I'll just check with the old slot. Take the with old the All right, grumpy. There we go, Tommy. Take a little stroll and exercise yourself, dear little fellow. Mr. Sloth! Mr. Sloth! Yes, Mr. Sloth, it's me, Igor. I wonder, perhaps, you see, there's a uh, Tommy. <laughs> Tommy, yeah, nice fellow, with claws and a long tongue. And I thought we could play around together for a couple days. What do you think? What did he say? He said, uh, 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 uh. And I, I presume that means no. Exactly. As usual, that's what I thought. Well, don't worry, Igor. I Tommy, have lots it was of nice meeting you. Shake it. Oh, shake tails. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tommy, off we go. Goodbye, Igor. Goodbye, Doc. Come tomorrow, Doctor. I'll be back. I'll bring us something nice. Bye-bye. Nice. They're all nice. Remember. Kiss our friends. Bye-bye. Larry's house of Frankenstein continues in a moment. <laughs> Bawana Clyde Batty. Yes, Batty. Buana Clyde went swimming in his scuba diving gear when something caught his eye that seemed bizarre and rather queer. He saw 500 minnows sitting seated row by row watching what could best be called a deep sea Broadway show. For on the stage was salmon, a chorus of sardines, two lovely tunas, one of whom was busily stealing scenes. But the show was interrupted when a school of sharks went past, who swallowed all the audience and at least half of the cast. Booga booga, which means it's Zidey Zoo time! Oh, hello, 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 and welcome to Zany Zoo. Your host and commentator, right here, Bawana Clyde Batty at your service and willing to show you the films that I have been fortunate enough to get. Now, I want to start off our day with a little call of the long neck side swinging safari. 
long neck side swinging sipper. And the call goes something like this. Must it always be this way? Hello? Oh. Well, you know, it's not nice to be rude. He could have said, you know, wrong number or something like that. I hope you don't do that on phones, because it's quite rude. But never mind that for now, because we're going to have a wonderful time today, because I have just a lovely film to show you. So come on, here we go to the projector. Oh, yes, let's get it in focus here. Yeah? All right, switch is on now. Right, wheels in place, here we go, and what are we going to see? What are we going to see here? Oh, look at that, would you? Isn't that lovely? Oh, oh, oh. oh, yes. Now, we have, oh, we're going to have two little friends today. We're going to have the striped and the spotted hyena. Now, first, we're going to have the spotted hyena. There he is, quite nice, too. Now, we've, he's found in most areas of tropical Africa. Oh, look at that. Hoo, 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 hoo. Watch out for that, chap. Now, we have the striped hyena, which has a longer range from all over Africa, through the Near East, all the way to India and Pakistan. Now, both grow to be four feet in length. They have a one foot long tail, weigh, oh, generally about 100 pounds. Now, it has a large head, and powerful forelegs, but the hind legs are rather weak, surprisingly enough. Now they only have 34 teeth, but they are extremely strong and with powerful jaw muscles capable of crushing bones. My goodness gracious. Now they have rough, coarse coats, just when you see that. Oh yes, oh there, there, there's a stripe. The stripe has a greyish to light yellowish brown colour with dark brown to black markings across the neck and around the legs. You see that there? Oh my goodness. Now the spotted, yeah, right, right, the spotted has spots instead of stripes. Well, I guess that kind of figures, doesn't it? It has along its neck there and back what is called an erectile mane, consisting of hairs about 10 inches long, which can stand on their end like bristles. Oh, much like the porcupine, eh? Now they give off, oh, kind of an offensive order, somewhat like skunks do. Let's take a look there. Isn't that something to see? My goodness gracious. Wasn't that interesting? Did you like that? I certainly did, and I hope you did. All right, as we say at Zany Zoo when we're leaving, never forget to say, Ooga Booga, which means if you can't dolly along in the right place at the right time, why dolly at all? All right then, so goodbye. For one o'clock, Patty, at your service. That's a heavy trip. Psh, dig the light show. I am the wolf man. Ow! I am the wolf man. Extending greetings, salutations, boo papadoo, and how do you do? To all the refugees of the Frankenstone fan club, welcome to set number one of the Lost Soul Session. And now I'm back with my gro groovy people, my people, you people. Now it's time to get to, you know what, one of our fine golden goodies, because this is E-E-C-H, Radio Fang Tastic, yeah. Hello. When you are more involved in the experimental fundamentals, then no, master. <laughs> it's very easy, actually. What have you got there, Igor? Oh, master, this is this week's edition of the Wall Street Journal. Uh, A four-star edition, if you don't mind. I don't One, mind. two. Oh, you are advancing very quickly. Thank is you, there anything interesting in that? Yes, Master. There is an article in here about a fellow from Boston that made his monster wear. Very good. Let yes. me hear what he has to say. Well, it says here, Master, according to the latest reports, Professor Wolfgang von Schmutzengehauben Schmitzengarden Schmutzer the third. Igor. Yes, Master. Has anyone ever told you that you speak strangely? No, Master. Well, I just did. Oh, thank you, Master. You're welcome. Continue. Well, he brought his monster to life 
by reactivating actively actual acceleration of all acute and a couple of cute little accelerators. And how they do that? And they all lived happily ever afterwards. <laughs> These beginners, <laughs> mere fundamentals. fundamentals. Nothing to it. <laughs> but with me, with the count, that he spent all of his years concentrating, experimenting with the most scientific technology known to man, who has been able to achieve a system that is irreproachable by anyone, even using variable vane torque converters for extra takeoff and passing power. I have developed a system that is foolproof. Master, I'm not familiar with it. What is it? I will show it to you, Igor. Brucey, will you give me a break? Please, I ask you. I ask you, Brucey. The castle lights are growing dim. There's no one left but me and him. When next we meet in Frankenstone, don't come alone.